life. At least where I'm watching, it's 10 all at the moment, game one. Sorry for the delay. I thought the final would have started at one. Uh, but I think obviously Al Hamami and Sobi finished early. And yeah, the men's final started earlier than anticipated. Oof, through the legs. I think if you watched Ali Farag's unscripted video, which is available on the um, coaching app, you will you will know that he's obviously um, gone through these situations in his head a couple of times. So being 10 all against Paul Cole is actually not going to actually worry him at all. I think he's got the capability of dealing with that and handling that. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, guys, please feel free to, um, you know, message me on the chat. I think there is a bit of a delay. It's obviously open to subscribers only, um, just to make sure that we don't have, you know, I don't want to say unwanted comments per se, but, you know, we just keep it open to those who really want to be uh, and not cause disruption, I guess. Um, but yeah, my prediction is Ali Farag to take a 3-1. But um, depends what's going on here. The double bounce. So still game one. Ali is 11-10 up against Cole. Uh, for those of you who either are watching along with the sound muted or let's say, um, you know, um, or are watching it or maybe cannot watch it, um, I cannot obviously share my screen. If we do that, that would be illegal. But yeah, I think Ali's just taking it 12-10, taking the first one 12-10. Um, there's sort of an appeal for a double bounce. It doesn't look like it will be double. I'm going to put up volume just to see. Yeah, and that seems like they conceded that one. Um, so yeah, Ali Farag leads game one, um, or leads 12-10 game one. It was 17 minutes for the first one. I missed it. I was under the impression that it was only starting um, at one o'clock in South Africa, or South African time. Um, but as I said, I think the women's final obviously got wrapped up a bit earlier. I will still go back and see what happened in terms of that. So if someone knows what happens in the women's final, let me know. Uh, but yeah, Ali and Paul Cole, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there was a period of time where Paul used to have Ali's number, but I don't think... Um, he can, I'm not to say he can't do it. I think Ali's just on another level at the moment. He's moving really well. He's, um, you know, anticipating well. He's really commanding the team. And if you guys haven't watched that unscripted or Ali Farag unscripted um, documentary or sort of series that they did, or episode that they did, it's 45 minutes. I think if you're on the squash skills coaching app, you'll be able to watch that. If you haven't watched that, I think I would advise you can, or I would advise that you do watch that just to sort of get your, uh, I think you start to appreciate Ali a lot more. I never appreciated Ali as much as I do now in terms of what he can do. Um, and I think both of these guys are good examples of ways to simplify the game. Um, they know what their strengths are. Other people do have, you know, shot making abilities, but they just try to keep the ball active. They just try, not the ball active, they just try to keep, I guess, um, the game simple. They just try to push the ball around, look for gaps. And it's more of a chess match, I believe. Um, I think also Paul Cole with the change in his swing technique and his movement patterns has also started to adapt that and it's obviously helped him. Um, I find his mechanics a bit weird. I understand them in principle in terms of getting a racket up and that's what he's doing. But um, yeah, I find it a bit odd. Very hard to replicate. I think you really have to get it um, 
sort of ingrained into you, like any swim technique, I guess, at the end of the day. But it is something similar to, I think, Rod Martin, who seems to be here at this tournament, who's coaching him, as well as I think there was another Isles back in the day, who also played in a very similar fashion. Um, but yeah, game two, Paul Cole takes the first point. So yeah, if you are not aware of the score, it is one love to Ali Farah. Game two has just started. And Paul Cole's two love up to unforced errors from Ali. Um, which is uncharacteristics, but uncharacteristic. But we do know Ali can have slow starts or back in the day. It seems like these days he's put that behind him. Um, not too sure what mental exercises he's been doing, but I think just either focusing on different type of games and different type of condition games and I guess coming back with a better mindset after that injury. Uh, it seems that he's sort of putting the bad starts to bed and... Um, you know, starting out well, but, you know, two unforced errors, I guess, looking for a good start. Um, I wouldn't say they were bad errors per se, you know, they could have been winners. And then, yeah, uh, Paul Cole seems to also have changed the, I wouldn't say changed the game, because like, I didn't watch much of game one, but um, he's taking Ali in quite short, uh, not letting Ali dictate the pace in the middle with his volleys. So, yeah, there comes in another boast. Uh, it seems like that's where he's trying to expose Ali's um, movements as well as um, dominance over the tee. Um, but I think that's what's going to separate the winner from the loser between these two. You know, they've both got a very simple game. They like keeping the ball active. They like keeping the rallies going. But whoever's going to dominate the middle of the court is going to do well. Cole's going to obviously try to do that with his height. And, well, I won't say only height. Seems to be slowing. He's able to pick up the pace again. Um, he's added that element to his game, but he's also obviously able to slow it down. But yeah, poor call, poor love up. Um, the fourth point that he's won in the front of the court. Um, so it seems like that's where he's going to put his focus on. He's not going to beat Ali in the mid court. He's not going to beat Ali, um, Ali basically in the back of the court. He seems to be throwing that boast in and then the drop. So it seems to be a shot pattern combination. Of, ooh, Everybody again. Seems to be a shot pattern as well as a combination that he's throwing in. Hey, Quinton. How are you doing? I uh, hope you are enjoying the final. Um, Quinton is a squash uh, club member, also a teammate of mine here in Port Elizabeth, a lot part, uh, from Long Park, either at the club itself or at home. He's a big squash fan. So yeah, poor call six love up. Um, seems like this new game plan attacking Ali in front seems to be working quite well. Um, you know, I think he's had a lot of good advice with Rob Martin being uh, Rob Martin being there. Um, and I think you know if you watched that documentary about him also on the Squash Skills app, um, you will see that he his game. Rob Owen has tried to obviously change his. Um, movement patterns and his uh, technique. And a lot of that has been based on Rodney Martin. Um, they speak about it quite a bit in the documentary itself. And then, yeah, okay, so Ali's taken a point back. He's 6-1 down. Um, quite difficult. Well, my prediction was 3-1 to Ali. So if Paul Cole is going to win one, <laughs> and if my prediction holds, I guess it would happen around about now. Um, he would take the second, and then I think Ali would come back and obviously make the adjustments necessary to take the third and the fourth. But you never know. Um, I think the last time they played, it was a 3-2, 12-10 to, uh, to Ali. So it can be close. Um, but let's see what goes on. Yeah. But as I said, Paul Cole seems to be exposing Ali's movement to the front court um, with a counter drop and with a boast. Um, what he's trying to do is basically starve Ali from there, that specific movement, um, if you were watching, um, where Ali comes in and takes any sort of loose ball in the midcourt area with that wing, wingspan of his taking short. So he's been throwing a lot more bows from the back um, and then obviously hitting with a counter drop. But then Ali is obviously making the right adjustments now, um, I guess using more cross courts, um, also stepping up on the tee 
just trying to, oh, there we go, calls to call the post again. Um, stepping up on the T, trying to, um, you know, read that post, but I've never seen Paul Cole throw so many posts, but it's also a two wall post. So it's dipping, it's not coming back into the center where Ali would obviously be able to take one step forward and do something about it. But um, Paul Cole's strategy seems to be working. I've never seen him throw so many posts, but it seems to be working now. I think we saw, I want to say something similar, uh, just in terms of changing patterns and, and uh, you know, patterns of play and um, tactics. When Paul Cole played Mo um, in that third game, when Mo, Mo took it, I think you could see he started using a lot more height, forcing Cole to generate the pace from up top. And that obviously left a lot of balls in the middle where um, Mo was obviously a lot more deadly. Um, he was able to take those balls in short. Um, so you can't come in with one game and there's another post from Paul Cole. Uh, that's, as I'm saying, it's very uncharacteristic. Always normally see him playing the ball down the line, obviously. But if anything that's half court now, he's just basically throwing it in the front um, and getting Ali stuck behind it. So that's one of the interesting things. I think if you watch the unscripted documentary, Ali did mention the fact that, you know, in a game where he feels like he's in a rut, he will try hit his corners well and just make sure that the opponent is stuck behind him. And then now Paul Cole seems to be doing that to Ali. And anything where if he's stuck behind him, he's going to take it short. There we go. Once again, any any sort of opportunity where um, um, he can get Ali behind him, he'll take it in short. Um, so he's just trying to keep Ali stuck behind him. And he's doing well. Oof, unfortunately, everybody, Ali. So Paul Cole is 10-3 up in the second. If he closes this out... It'll take them to one all. So it's a very quick game. The first one was 17 minutes. I'm not too sure how we are for this one. And that's an unforced error from Ali off the serve, trying to go for a short kill. Um, but yeah, it is now one all. Paul Cole took that one. It was a very quick game. Um, he seemed to have just got Ali stuck behind him and then took him in short. So his drop shots seem to be working. Um, he's both seem to be working because Ali's waiting for something to come back and it's not coming back. Um, you know, he's mixing up quite nicely. Um, I don't know, you guys in the comment section, let me know. Do you think that um, I'm the only one that's noticed that Paul Cole's obviously trimmed down a bit? You know, he has always had size. Um, I know he's a strong boy, but it seems like he's um, lost a lot of weight. Oof, okay, there we go. Second game, only eight minutes. So the first game, 17 minutes, that was 12 10 to Ali. And then the second game, Ali just, yeah, I guess Paul Cole's got his tactics right. He took that one 11 3. In eight minutes, so uh, you know, nine minutes shorter than the first game. You know, basically half the time. Um, so yeah, I, I, we will see what happens if there's going to be a response from Ali. If he's going to change up the tactic, and I'd love to see what he does. How he gets Paul to um, you know stay stuck behind him. But that's what I'm saying. That even the shots that uh, Paul played or Ali played in the second game. They were good shots. It's just that, you know, Paul Cole's boasts were all two or boasts and they just basically stayed short. They stayed in that zone one area. Um, so I think Ali's going to have his work cut up, out for him. I think one thing he probably can do to take the third is probably employ the same tactics that Mo used yesterday to steal that um, third game. You know, use a lot of high force Cole to generate pace from up top. Um, the ball won't be low at the back, so it's going to be very hard to execute a two or boast from up high. But let's see, you know, this is the world number one for a reason. Um, probably uh, one of the smartest squash players that I've ever seen in terms of tactics. And everyone talks about the way of breathing and his strategy. And, you know, um, he's great. So I want to see how he, if he scripted the scenario in his head, I'd love to see if he, you know, knows how to um, handle whatever Paul's going to throw at him. And I definitely know that Paul's not going to come with the same game plan. Um, you'll probably find that he'll try to do the same things that he did in the second game. And if that doesn't work, he's obviously got a plan B. I'm sure Rod Martin, being smart enough, will have told him what to do. Um, and you have to be able to adapt, I guess. And yeah, start of the third game. So Paul seems to be throwing the ball up a lot higher. And let's see what Ali is doing. He's throwing in the post of his. Um, yeah, Paul seems to be going for a lot more height. I don't know if he's trying to just shake things up a little bit and not make it obvious of what his plan is going to be at the end. But he's going back to what you'd like to say is the traditional Paul Cole. You know, a lot of lengths, a lot of straight drives, 
haven't seen the bow thrown in yet unless he's being a little bit patient setting a pattern of um you know the old style and then going to then basically shaking things up and confusing ali but um you can see ali now is a lot more i won't say patient but he's trying to establish the basics everyone's trying to hit their length both of them are just trying to get a good length and ali is just going back to simple squash he hasn't started using a lot of height yet as it needed to but yeah there we go paul called the first one short um and ali is just basically playing around the back court um sending it to the back length 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 lock cross court um so this is a very long first rally especially when you compare it to um the second game where it, it was over in eight minutes i think the first game was a lot closer to that to the 17 17 minute mark so yeah that was lit <sighs> and let's see what happens short four call takes it in short counters oof Paul's very deadly in front, it seems. Um, I don't know if that's something that he's trying to sharpen up. Uh, I know he has always been good, but it seems like there are a lot more options in the front. Um, he's taking balls in short with the bows from the back, and then up front now he's actually throwing a lot more cross-court drops. But there we go. You see, that's where he'll struggle. If he leaves anything open up here on the sides, um, Ali's just going to come in and step in and take that. Hey, Quentin. Yeah, I think with streams, it will be a few minutes um, behind. Um, just checking comments here, moving it up short and mixing things up nicely. It's hurting fair. Yeah, correct. Um, but I also feel like Paul Cole's added in a lot more pace to his game. I think in the past, you'd lofted a lot more. You know, you'd obviously lifted a lot more. So 2-1, two, 2 Farag. So Farag's obviously, you know, making a charge. But I think, I wouldn't say I liked Paul Cole's earlier strategy. Per se, it was working. Um, but now you can see Ali stepping up on the team and then Humphrey's area again. Um, so I think a bit of pressure, a bit of nerves is definitely um, getting to him. Um, that's something that Ali would have eaten up all day um, on most occasions. But, you know, that can happen. Uh, he has spoken about the fact that, you know, he does get nervous for certain games. and That can have a big effect to your game. Um, but, yeah, that unforced error takes them to two all in the third. So it's one all if you guys are not aware of the score. It is one all. We are in game three. It's currently two all. Um, Paul Cole had a or won the third game quite convincingly, eleven three, um, by changing up strategies by taking Ali a bit short. Um, I think I saw three or four boasts that he took from the backcourt um, to uh, two all boasts just to sort of keep Ali, um, you know, in check. And yeah, there we go. Ali is now coming back with a lot more of a hold playing a lot more the cross courts. I think he was, it was not to say the straight shot wasn't working for him, but it wasn't working for him as well. And now what you can see, he's starting to use a lot more width and he's just getting in front of Paul. And that's where, there we go. So 4-2 to Farag. Um, you're going to see that I think he's going to basically take up that higher position on the tee. Um, I think with the boats, boats that Paul used to catch him off guard, um, you will see that um, that's where he, he, he definitely lost the second game. Now he's stepping up in the tee, which is allowing him to take anything loose and just take or starve for call that extra second, especially when he takes it in short. So, yeah, we are... It is 4-2 to Farag at the moment, um, game three. And, yeah, this is looking like Farag of old or, you know, world champion Farag, um, where he's dominating the tee, taking in a lot of volleys, making people scramble. Um, the first few, yeah, there we go. The first few games, um, you didn't see it as much. It seems like Paul Paul might have snapped the string. Um, yeah, so he's going to go change rackets. That's where I'm at now. I think it's going to be 5 2. He made a mistake there. Yeah, there we go. Unforced error. Strings have snapped. Um, there we go. You can see that. Which is, yeah. I haven't used that string before, but Kirsch, Kirsch, Kirsch bomb. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. I think it's called a Kirsch bomb string. And um, it's a 1.2 millimeter string that he has in his, um, uh, what do you call it, the head Slim Body 120. Um, they do have a newer cosmetic. I think that's the ones that came out this year. I also see uh, Amanda Sobey has switched from a traditional frame to the same frame that Paul Cole's using. Although she hasn't used a fan pattern, she's using the straight string pattern. Um, but yeah, uh, I think they did mention something about the fact that in Singapore, he seemed to be struggling with his grip. 
Paul Paul that is he to be struggling with his grip and he's now incorporated or used um you know a over grip to sort of um I don't know what that actually gives him because I know that racket is sort of at least the previous model was a little bit head heavy so I don't know with the extra over grip if it makes it more evenly well evenly distributed and that's been contributing oh geez that's an unforced error and Ali did not have to I guess it's one of those things. Should he have played that or held for a stroke? I think if it was in the fifth game, he definitely would have held that, uh, opted for a stroke. But um, yeah, um, <laughs> it would seem that um, Ali has made two crucial errors, but they should have been winners. But yeah, you know, it's not going to stop him from playing these games. Not good. He's not going to stop playing those shots just because he's missed them. But he's opening up the court a lot more, a lot more combinations of straight and long. So he's basically keeping... Paul Paul honest. I think the first first game is always going to be if he the second game he you know Paul Paul caught him a lot. Um, now he's going to keep Paul Paul's movement honest, um, throwing a lot more straights, cross court, straights, cross court, not just a straight shot, which he was probably doing a lot more in the first game. But now Paul Paul seems to be guessing. Farag is up six three, which is um, as I said, if he's going to change anything, he's going to change it in the third. Um, it's going to be a big response to. What Paul Cole um, did in the second game, and I think, yeah, it's 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 in his way he's doing to Paul Cole what Paul Cole is doing to him. And there we go, Paul Cole throwing that two or both. So it seems that Ali struggling with the two or both. Um, if he's not winning, he's putting Ali in. If Paul Cole's not winning with the two or both, he's putting Ali in a difficult situation where he's waiting for the crossword and just setting it wrong. Um, so that both seems to be working for him. Um, the two or both is a phenomenal shot if you want to check someone's movement. Um, yeah, and Ali is just basically going to keep on fighting. He's got a two-point lead, which can help him, but he's also stretching uh, Paul. It would seem that Paul Paul's front court game is phenomenal. Um, that is a contentious pickup. I'm not too sure. Um, he's not too happy with that one. They said it was up. I didn't know what it was. Um, I, I wouldn't say I would have played a bit, but it's obviously valid that he's going to review this one. Um, because, yeah, this cross court, well, there's a one there, but I think there's, yeah, there comes none of this one. Fix it up there. No, it seems like they're playing a let. I don't have the volume up here because it's quite interesting or quite difficult for me to listen as well as speak. But, so, yeah, there we go. So, the pickup was good, and then Paul Cole responds um, with a winner down the line. Obviously, a bit of um, of a hold and a flick to the back corner. But yeah, so it is 7-5 in the third game, or has tight. And that's where Paul Cole is going to, um, you know, shine at the end of the day. You know, him being a little bit more accurate. Um, I think Ali needs to just move him around where he's going to get desperate just in, just so that he makes a few more mistakes. But I think also at the same time, Ali is not trying to be passive because I think that's what he was in the second game, a little bit more passive. And Paul basically said, well, if you're going to watch that and watch, I will take it too. And you can see now he's being he's a lot more active. He's a lot more aggressive. He seems to have woken up. He seems to have... Um, understood what it is that Ali was trying to do and now he's responding in his own way and the thing is that I'm seeing here now is I want to say the loss of length but Paul seems to have stepped up a lot better and he's taking the ball on the volley um, a lot better so he's not letting the ball get to the back and if he does get it to the back he knows that he's basically in one of Ali's traps so he's there you go the two of us again hurting Ali hurting Ali and then, oh, he's got a beautiful straight leg. It looks like he's coming across straight, or coming across the body, and then he's straight in the last minute. So with that high preparation, as I said, I I find his swing technique very different. Um, not to say that I'm not a fan of it, but obviously it does seem robotic. But I understand the principle that he's trying to get his racket up. He's trying to prepare. He's trying to you know um, make sure that he swings through the ball the entire time. Um, but yeah, so Paul Cole has come back. I think he was, ooh, that's beautiful. He's deadly on the front court. He is now 9-7 up. And that was after being, I think it was 6-2 down. Um, yeah, Ali needs to respond. He needs to figure out what he needs to do, um, how he needs to make things a little bit better. 
The poor call seems to have his number, especially in the front court. Um, I haven't seen such a dominant display by Paul Cole in the front court. I know he's obviously a great front. I think everyone obviously appreciates his ability to hit the ball out of the back and obviously keep it straight. Straight, But he's obviously been working on his front court ability and that is has been shining. I think most of the points that he's now come back and won is something you saw half volley um, steps in there and not half volley, sorry, a volley in the you know, later half of the court and just taking it short and being able to take it short. And so it seems like there was a bit of a you know, a clash. Um, oof. I'm going to take a left there. But yeah, as you can see, Ali is struggling to keep the ball behind or get the ball behind Paul Cole. And Paul's doing really well in terms of counter-attacking as well as stepping up. So he's also taking up a high position on the tee and just basically volleying everything, not letting anything get to the back. Uh, so that's a stroke. Ooh. They say let. He didn't have access to all front. So my reason, and this is obviously 9-7, talking about the point, 9-7, uh, I forgot. I think the reason that would have been a stroke is that he hasn't got access to the whole front wall, but it might be a thing of the uh, referee might think that at that position where he wants to hit it, he would not have gone across. Oh, okay. From the sky view, I can see why they would have said yes, let for safety. But now it depends on at what second does he want to hit it. Does he want to hit it early? So, yeah, it's 50-50. It's, it's at the time that the ball's coming in, could he have hit cross court and would he have hit it? Probably. But, yeah, that sky view definitely makes it a let, at least in my decision, just for safety. It's not guaranteed that his whole access to the front court would have, would have was taken away. Um, so, yeah, that's a yes that decision. Poor call is 9-7 up. Um, a very good comeback. Um, so my predictions were still, <laughs> it was 3-1 to Ali. And I think those two unforced errors that I spoke about, you know, that could have definitely shut the game out. But Paul is doing well. He's stepping up. He's taking, I've never seen him take the ball so, um, or, or step up on the tee as much as he's done now. And Ali was doing that in the beginning of the game, but it seems like now Paul Paul's just decided to say, well, you know what? I know what you're doing. You're getting, you are, you are, um, what do you call it? Keeping me stuck behind you. So I'm going to step up in front of you and prevent you from um, actually, you know, dominating the T area. And when I say it's all the middle of the court, not even the T area, just the entire middle area. So all the way from service box to service box, he seems to be occupying and dominating that space um, where Ali seems to be struggling to do so. So it's 10 7 for Paul Cole. Who, if he takes us, will be 2 1 up, which is quite a surprise compared if you think about how this match started. And he just took one back there. So it's still 8 10. Paul Cole still on game war. Um, yeah, Paul Cole's just been dead in front. Um, that front court, he's dominated that area. And it's it makes sense. Ali occupies the space down or in the middle, as well as the back court. Um, the only left, the only area left that you can actually do anything is probably in the front court. Um, you know, Ali's just got perfect movement, um, or is able to just use that wingspan of his. Ooh. And Paul Cole takes that third one, 11 8. Um, a great response from Paul Cole, especially since he was 6 2 down and he came back to win that one. And just obviously getting in front of Ali, uh, not letting uh, Ali bully him in the middle. Um, using a lot of height, keeping it short, using that zone one area. So I think, as I said, um, it was going to be interesting. The third game was going to be very interesting. So Ali, for him, it's make it or break it in the fourth. It's going to be very interesting. I feel like he's either going to get it right or it's going to be one of those games where, um, you know, there's going to be a big fight to win the fourth. And obviously the fifth one will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, a different story um, they've been here before this year already i think as i said the last time that they played ali won three two i think it was 12 10 in the fifth so uh, ali has to respond i'm not too sure if that's gonna cost him a lot of energy or he has to do tactically in order to do so but he needs to get in front of paul he was doing that well but then it's those type of shots i'm obviously watching now with the highlights that they have of game three um just before they start game four it's sort of he moved him forward, but it wasn't clean enough. And the thing is that Paul was quick enough to get there, 
and actually punish him. And you can see it's all these counter attacks and these holds. So in the front court area, he's taking him short and Ali is missing the mark basically um, on the attack. Paul Cole's counter attack has just been a little bit better. Um, he seems to be struggling, as I said, with the drops. Um, on the volley, so he's missed in the third game, he missed two uh, critical volleys, I would say, um, which hit the tin, clipped the tin. And then it seems to be, he seems to be losing from not being able to execute such a good shot in the front court. So he's taking him to the front, but they've been loose. They've been clipping the side wall. So obviously with a drop shot, you want to go front wall, ground, side wall. But he's been clipping the side wall, front wall, side wall. And that's given Cole Cole, obviously, the space. Because he has to clear out because if he doesn't move, that's going to be a stroke. But then that's where Paul has come in there with obviously a little bit of speed and acceleration and straight to them. Uh, and he hasn't got a response for that. So let's see what happens in the fourth game. It is game number four. Paul Cole currently 2-1 up. And unforced area. Or area, obviously, taking trying to take Ali to the front, um, like we saw in the previous games. And then once again, Ali making that mistake, um, not clinical enough. Paul Cole's got the hold now, obviously, with a high racket prep. And last minute, he's obviously making his decision. And also, I'm also seeing a lot more cross-court drops from Paul, which I have not seen in the past. So he's been adding a lot of layers and elements to his game. I think being with uh, Rod Martin, it seems like he was able to either understand some of the things that he's been learning from Rob Owen a lot better, but it also seems that he's been able to you know, add a few more options to his game, which I've definitely not seen before. Um, I know quite a few, not quite a few. Some people do like Paul Cole. Some people find his style a bit boring and attritional. But now it would seem that, you know, he's added a lot more elements to the game, which make him a little bit unpredictable. Um, a lot more taxis than I've seen coming out of his game. And yeah, there we go. That's where he's going to be strong now. He's just stepping up in front of Ali. Ali seems to be expecting the ball to get all the way to the back, whereas Paul is robbing him of that opportunity, being a lot faster. And you can see, boom. That's going to be a good drop. But still, Paul's able to get in there, lift the ball up nicely, super accurate on the lob. So, yeah. Oof. If Ali's going to do something, he's going to have to do, you know, obviously he'll pick his moment that he has to do something. But if he's going to do something, he has to change. I won't say change the game plan. He just has to find a way of stepping up or stepping in front of Cole. And Cole's obviously adding a lot more flex. As I said, you can see there now, he's taking sort of any 50-50 ball. He's just making sure he's the first one to arrive. If he's not confident with the shot, he's lifting it with obviously uh, a lot of height to make sure that he occupies his space. But he's using the tool most very well. Um, I think it's probably a, a shot that hasn't been utilized as well as it could by a lot of other players. I would say Ali used to use the tool almost very well. Um, but yeah, Paul seems to be enjoying that. And that has been causing Ali a lot of problems. See, there's another two wall. Eventually, you can clip the third wall there. But yeah, it's still too also he seems to be exploiting that. I mean, Ali's movements. It seems like there might be if there's any two corners that Ali feels uncomfortable in. And there we go. He took him to the front corner. Um, seems like Ali's not comfortable in the front right or the front left. Um, and as I said, everyone tries to beat Ali obviously in the middle or at the back. And I don't think he can be happy. So he just said, Well, what others, what other areas of the court can I exploit? And it seems to and he seems to be exploiting the front court. Um, yeah, he's just dominating that whole mid channel. He's moving so clean. See, that's that that shot there where Ali obviously just let that go past him. Um, I feel that it would be in a place where um, he could have, you know, started to add pressure. But he's taking his balls in short, but he's just not as accurate as he can be, especially taking the balls into um, the front left and the front right. So it is 4-1 for Paul Cole, or to Paul Cole in the fourth game. So Cole is 2-1 up uh, in games and also 4-1 up in the fourth, um, which is, I would say, surprising. My money was an Ali, but uh, it would seem um, like Paul has got a strategy that is going to work, um, you know, with his new friend. I'm guessing they have been friends, but it's the first time it seems that they are working together. First time I've seen the combination of uh, Rod Martin as well as um, Paul Cole. I know that Martin was 
coaching. Well, I think he still coaches Altamini as well as Marwan. But from what I understand, Marwan has moved on to um, to Pontifrac. Is it Pontifrac? Where is James Wilshaw from? I think he's working with James Wilshaw. Um, from what I do understand, I know Sal's obviously working with Wilshaw as well in terms of movement. Um, that has been unique in a sense because I do feel some of the things that made a solid, obviously they're controversial things about his movement, but some of the things I felt made a solid really, really good in terms of his movement or I guess his shot uh, making ability and his power was the way he moved and obviously got him into a lot of trouble, but that that's why he was the player that he was. But now with him changing his movement, I don't know, I'm just seeing that it doesn't seem like he is as confident yet. And it seems like it's something that he still either has to grasp um, in terms of what new patterns is he going to play with the way he moves now. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Marwan and James, uh, Marwan as well as uh, Mustafa seem to be taking, um, you know, time to reconfigure the game, especially with, new, with a new coach being James Wallstrop. I'm not too sure if they're just working on movement per se, or well, it's obviously a shot making ability that James had as well when to pick certain opportunities. Um, but you know, um, yeah. In terms of Rod Martin and Paul Cole, as I said, um, it would seem that there are a lot more elements. So, you know, I'm not saying you should change coaches if you want to um, excel, but you know, being able to be open to some suggestions that people have sometimes does the world of good and that's what i'm saying this seems like a newer poor call i know obviously he's been developing this game um over the years but now i think we're getting closer to a finishing product um i'm starting to understand things a little bit better it's not so monotonous i think he just had to basically get his foundations set first before he could add any extra layers um so that attritional game of his never going to disappear but you can see that he's obviously um, added a few more elements, especially attacking options, something that Joel Megan also started doing recently, adding a lot more attacking options to his basic game. But yeah, Ali is on it, making Paul move. I think he's woken up, he's establishing and taking the dominant position on the team. Um, I think looks like Ali as well as um, Paul have those whoop recovery bands, whatever you call them, the ones that track your sleep and obviously um, give you a lot more science. Oof. Unforced error by Ali again. That winning area. That's I, that's why I said in the third game he made two unforced errors, uh, front left and front right of the volley, and then he's just made a critical one now, and that now takes Paul Cole to five for up. Um, oof. what is that going to be? Stroke. Ooh. Interesting. I think that's yeah. I think he's definitely looking for it, but you know Ali needs to do anything that he can right now to uh, get a point. Um, he needs everything that he can for this to go to the fifth, and then obviously uh, whatever master plan that he has, you know, will be unhatched if he has but what. Um, yeah, he held him. The ball's actually the ball's way up front. Uh, from the back, it does look bad. Obviously, you know the person wants to hit it, but there's a lot of there's a lot of space. If anything, let's see where does he want to play it. Yeah, he can't hold. He might even get a no let. But that's me being um, uh, a bit dramatic. Um, I don't know if they're going to go all the way from stroke to no let. That obviously seems bad on their end. Um, but it was a good appeal. Yeah, there we go. That's a good appeal from um, Paul Cole. So stroke decision overruled. Um, it's a yes let. So we are at 5-4 in the fourth. Paul Cole versus Ali Farag. Um, yeah, but Ali just hasn't been, not to say he's not an accurate player, I would be very wrong to say that, but I think Paul Cole has been very accurate in terms of hitting his lines and targets. Um, and Ali has just made a few mistakes, so I guess he's been trying to be clinical, he's been trying to be clinical in his approach and you know, shot making ability, but he's obviously made a few unforced errors. And I think he's desperate for points because normally sometimes you'd actually see Ali when he's super confident, some of these shots where he's taking them short, he would have actually just extended the rally by sending the person long. You know, they always say that he weaves, weaves his web, and sort of the, by the time he actually executes a winning shot, it's like so obvious because he's put the opponent in such a bad space that it's a very obvious shot, and there's no pressure on the winner. 
whereas I feel like he's had to definitely work a lot longer, a lot more today, um, because Paul hasn't given him one the opportunity to step up in front of him. But now he's given, yeah, there we go, drop shot into the net. He's giving Paul a lot of time. Paul's actually doing. He's actually, you know, forcing Ali to, um, you know, take risks. And yeah, they're cutting the ball, taking his arm out so far. That's why I said that seems weird to me, but you know, the principle's good. He's keeping an open face. He's basically cutting down the ball, getting down the ball. And now he's dropped that into the neck. Paul calls 6 4 up. Uh, a very dominant performance. A very dominant performance. Um, and I think Ali's struggling. Um, I think we'll see a lot more risk. He has to take a lot more risks now. Um, he's losing, he's 2-1 down in games, he is two points behind, it's 6-4 to poor. He has to take a few more risks, but once again, it depends how he deals with pressure. And that's, and that's why I say Ali can, you know, turn up when he needs to. I think he's basically going to do everything that he can to make sure this goes to the fifth. And then from there, um, we have to see what comes up, but taking that ball in the half space. I thought he was going to drive across with that one, but that was a brilliant shot. Um, I think he must obviously explore the opportunities in the front court. There we go. Paul Cole has been taking Ali to the front, but now it seems that Ali is a little bit more calm, approaching the ball, timing his movement to the front, and then leaving it really short. And as I said, that's where you want to drop your front court, ground, side wall, um, not like the others that he's been hitting sort of in the tip or coming off the side wall. So Fourth game, six all. There we go. I think that's when you know Ali's confident when the volley drop opportunity comes in and he's able to go long. Um, I don't know. Paul calls claiming to have hit him. Is that a stroke? With a let. Depending on was the swing prevented or affected. Okay. So he's playing review, play review for Ali. Um, because from what I saw there, um, Paul saying that he's uh, shot in the tunnels because he tipped Ali. Uh, Ali, I think, really wants it because if he does win that one, it takes him to. Ah, I don't see where he's at. On the dance floor. Where? Where? Ooh. That's the base. I I I'm not saying that it isn't there, but it's really hard. Ooh, it's a stroke. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so stroked Ali. I thought that con I won't say it was a minimal contact, but I couldn't see it. Um, but obviously that was a contributing factor for the ball going down. Um, so as I said now, um Ali needs to make a big move and lovely, and he does respond. It is now 7 all in the fourth, Paul Cole being 2 1 up in games, 7 all in the fourth, and that's where, uh, oof, yeah, I don't know, that's still debatable. If there was contact on that one, I'm not going to say people are lying per se, but I couldn't see it. And that's where Ali, as I said, he needs to basically destroy Paul Cole in the front left and front right. Um, that's the only space that he can exploit and he hasn't been doing so or he has been trying to but he's obviously made unforced errors but i think now he's just basically i think a bit of adrenaline the fact that he has to that's the only space that he can dominate anywhere else it seems like poor Cole has his number um and he's playing a lot more straight and cross obviously when he needs to but as i said now you would see when ali is very confident there we go another unforced error by poor Cole. my seven to ali i think we might see a five set here um yeah, when he's confident, he just extends the rally. He does not mind uh, making it longer. And I think what, what happened in the first, or especially when he was making those unforced errors, he was sort of rushing it. Uh, and that's why, obviously, he hit the tin and he was in an uncomfortable position to play the shot. But now he's actually, he could play the, the, the volley drop and he opts not to and he just extends the rally. And then now Paul Cole, obviously, is the one which has to sort of force and, you know, uh, I guess the pressure is now on Paul. And Ali is just basically going to extend the rally, keep on extending it. And then basically, I feel like that's where it's going to, it's either going to be a great winner where Paul's out of position, ooh, like that. Ooh, there we go, what a fetch. Um, 
or you're going to find that um, you know Paul's going to make an unforced error. And Paul doesn't seem to be going for he or he is going for the shots, but he's not executing them as well in terms of the front left and front right. Um, Ali just seems to be reading everything. On top of that, um, they just seem to be coming out, and then Ali's capitalizing and see, oh, this is going to be such a big rally. Ali, and he'll extend it. There we go. That's where you know he's confident and he's sharp. Um, he'll just extend it if he needs to. You know, I think a lot of players will be desperate. Oh, I saw him. I don't think Paul called me much about that shot. And Ali, obviously, there was a bit of a scramble, came to the middle of the court. If he hit that down the line, it would have been a winner, in my opinion. But yeah, 8 9. Uh, Ali has got nine, uh, four, four, four calls serving. So it's 8 9. Um, as I said, 2 1 in game to Paul Cole. It is a nerve wracking game. And it seems like he's also not trying not to rush. He's just going to try to extend. And then Ali is also going to keep on extending the rallies. You can see that lifting now is going to be about accuracy and basically waiting for someone to open up the court. Uh, either make the unforced error or give them opportunity. But yeah, there we go. It takes a bit of balls. It takes a bit of balls. Ali now serving for game ball in the fourth. 10 8 up. Got two game balls. Uh, super tight shot. And as I said, when you know Ali is confident, he's not rushing. Um, everything seems smooth. He doesn't seem nervous. He'll just extend the rally for the sake of extending the rally. Um, and just be patient. And I think that was missing in game three as well as uh you know game four. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. oh my screen just froze when you and now what's happening? What happened with stream? I don't know how that fourth game ended, but I know that I think it looks like Ali's won that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> my stream just froze. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would seem that I saw yeah, it's still freezing. I just saw um, Ali walking off. So I know it's 2 all. So my prediction of a 3-1 victory uh, for Ali has been thrown away. And then, yeah, I guess there we go. Down to game five. Wow. I really thought, especially the way Paul Cole started, I really thought that Ali was um, down and out. But he made the necessary adjustments needed. And as I said, that's why he is world number one. Um, you know, he knows what to do. Um, he's been in these situations before and he's just going to keep on fighting. And as I said, when Ali is confident, he won't be desperate to take the ball in short. He just keeps the rally going. He just keeps the person pushing the person. And obviously, I think he wanted to do so, but Paul was obviously a lot sharper. I think um, he might have seen the finish line too early. Um, oof. Well, finish okay now that the stream isn't frozen i could see that but i think he might have seen the finish line too early and then obviously the strong comeback from ali um made him probably a bit nervous probably a bit nervous and you can see that when the balls were there well, i see i would say when there were certain shots in certain areas where he normally especially in game two and game three, you know, he finished them, he put them in the neck or he finished them well, you know, they were just popping out and then Ali obviously being on that adrenaline rush is still able to just come inside and um, uh, inside that um, sort of space and area and actually just dominate it. So yeah, let's see what happens. Game five. Wow. Okay, so we got game five. I'm going to put up a little bit of volume. Um, up until we... Up until the match starts. Yeah, so game five. Um, I'm still thinking Ali's going to win. He obviously spent a lot of energy to try to come back. Um, they've got one review rema remaining each. Um, I guess oh, it's game five, so they're all getting the review. So they've used everything that they did have. Um, everyone's got one now. Um, so that's going to become quite critical, I think. But as you can see now, Ali is stepping up on the tee. He's dominating obviously i won't say accuracy is lacking but he's going to need to be wary of the fact that um paul is looking to take sort of any opportunity that he can sort of any um missed attack he's ready to counter and as you can see there there we go uh, making the court very long with those crossboard drops so you can play a lot more crossboard drops than you used in the past i think the straight drop was always on but now he's using the crossboard drop to 
great effect. And also the two of us are sort of really keeping the ball stuck in those corners. Uh, not to say he can't do it from the straight or from the, or the straight position per se, but he seems to be exploring that opportunity just to, I guess, add a follow-on shot. So even if they do fetch, I think that's the whole idea is that even if they do fetch the ball, um, it's going to be loose and then the next shot should be a winner if he hasn't won it already from the cross court club. But yeah, he has to be be careful with those because um, Ali seems to, you know, be able to, uh, there we go, unfortunately, Ali seems to be able to uh, capitalize on those areas, especially um, in, in, in pressure situations. I think that's where it's going to be. As I said, I think Ali just has it. I think he's been in these situations way too many times. So from the experience point of view, um, from a mindset point of view, from his, the way he obviously, uh, you know, structures his game and tactics. Ah, uh-uh, ah, no let. Ooh, with a stroke. He definitely cleared out. I think he's going to review that one. Always oh, let. I don't have the volume on, so I don't know. He seems to have cleared. Ooh, it depends where you want it to. So I do know, obviously, in terms of movements that you make, the first one, if you shape up to play and you actually, uh, you know, make any the first attempt, they call it first attempt. So I don't know if that was in that category of saying, well, it has to be let because there was actually a first attempt and then he took his racket back and then there was a second attempt. But um, yeah, only a let there. I would also say let. Uh, ooh. So I think with Paul Cole's new racket prep being so high up and he him able to, I guess, twist his... He's, his body a little bit. Um, he's still, still showing that he's going cross court and then obviously the hand uh, changing at the last minute. Um, I've seen so many taxis uh, from Paul Cole these days. So, as I said, new elements that he's added to his game. Um, and learning from the master being Rob Martin. Oh, there's another cross court shaping up and holding. Um, I think that's where he's basically trying to add. Uh, to his game, you know, it's more of a hold. So get a, a early, early racket prep, and then just hold, 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 and then shoot. Just a let there. Okay, so we are two all in games. Paul Cole being two one up. This is the fifth and final game. Uh, my prediction is still Ali going to take it. Um, I thought Ali would take it three one, but I still think Ali will take it three two. Um, not because of any preference or anything like that. Just you know. Um, Ali being world number one, and also the way he's been playing. Uh, these two seem to um, always have good games, and I think Ali just comes out on top um, more often, more in the past. I think there was a period of time where Paul Cole, every single time he played Ali, you know, was the top dog. Um, and then Ali obviously established a bit more dominance, and then, yeah, there we go. I think that's where, this, in this fifth game, I think that's where Ali is a lot more calm, whereas Paul will see the finish line too quickly or feels like there's pressure to sort of um you know take every opportunity that comes whereas Ali is willing to you know I won't say risk it but you know he's willing to just extend the rally and say well you know when the opportunity comes that's really obvious then I'll take it. How could he go across? Oof. Interesting. So still two all let ball play. Oh please Ah, uh, we'll it. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, three, two. Um, to Poco. Game five, two all in games. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough first few points. And then someone's going to basically, it's going to be one of those big calls or big decisions um, and someone's obviously going to go ahead with your pressure points so I see Ali now also utilizing the two or both to great effect um, you know gave him opportunity here but Paul um, Paul and his reset is just so good uh, his reset shots are so good um, geez oh there we go um, and I said I think in the fourth game that's what Ali did well he used that front court, front front left and front right a lot better than Paul did. But it seems like Paul's also now decided that he also wants to one establish dominance in the central area of the court and also use those two uh, parts of the court to win points. I think that's where you have to. I think everyone's movement to the back has just been so good these days. 
um, you know, the midcourt, the, the ends of the midcourt, and the back, right, back, left. Uh, you know, so many players are so strong in retrieving balls in those areas. But where I guess squash needs to, well, that's where squash has developed. You know, I think back in the day, you'd be able to say, you know, just hit a length, and you know, you're guaranteed to not guaranteed, but you know, the first one basically to make a mistake out of the back corners would lose. But um, everyone's moving out the back. I think they, unless the ball's glued to the wall, everyone is retrieving balls from the back, and that's where you need to win. It looks like that's where you're going to have to win. Um, you know, the front court area, uh, front left, front right, and that cross court nick from Paul Cole is beautiful. So Paul Cole five to up loose ball, so establish it one good length. Obviously, something came up loose, and he's seems like these days he's on fire in the front court, uh, being able to take ball in short. Um, now Ali needs to respond. Obviously, hit his targets. Um, he's missed one there, um, but I think he's still being patient. Oof. Okay, that's a let. Four calls, still five two up. It's the fifth game. Do or die. Do or die. Or one of these two. Um, let's see what. So he's obviously next. I think yeah. There we go. It's a stroke. So Ali is now basically just going to make sure he's going to step up on the tee, even if it hurts him. And that's the thing, you know, establishing dominance in the middle area of the court is so difficult. Um, it takes so much from you. That's, you know, that fast twitch fiber. Um, your reaction time has to be so good. And then also your ability to finish balls from those areas has to be so good. But basically stealing time away from people in the middle of the court is such a difficult um part of the game just because of what it requires from you in terms of mentality and also just physiologically to say that I want to move my body that fast and uh, put myself in sort of difficult positions. Um, so yeah, Ali's come back. There's only, the score is 4-5, Ali's serving. Uh, game five, two all. Uh, there we go, front left, there we go. So it seems like it's a battle of the middle as well as the front two corners. Um, that's where, opportunities are hitting that ball in the zone one area but then it seems like Paul Cole is able to drop those balls into the neck and Ali's also trying to do the exact same thing open up the racket face use a lot of head speed and actually take that ball in short um, as I said um, it seems like he's trying to obviously be I won't say maybe less patient he needs the gap to to narrow down and I think once he gets to if Ali can get to a space where ooh, beautiful shot from Paul so accurate on the front right if he can get a space where he's just two points above, then he'll just extend the rallies and make them long. Um, so now he's gunning for points. Both of them are gunning for points. So, you know, this is a crucial part of the game, mid, 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 mid part of the game. Uh, Paul Cole being 6-5 up in the fifth set. Once again, taking it short again. He's just trying to establish. Both of them are just trying to establish that two-point cushion. And then once they get that two-point cushion, ooh, such a good fetch from Paul. Once they get that two-point cushion, I think that's when they're going to try to extend the rallies a lot longer. And you'll see the traditional gut side of the game come part, come come back. Um, Ali's just looking for the opportunity. You can see he's playing the ball in this front right, front left. There we go. Ali once again set it up there, waiting for the cross ball set up in the front right. So that front right area, not front left, has been um, been used to expose or movement has been exposed in that area quite a lot. But it seems like both of them are realizing that's where they need to take and that's where they're going to have to win. So whoever can basically set up the game that there is a free shot to play. The front left or front right, I think that's what the game plan is. You know, they're playing, I wouldn't say in a similar manner, but tactics wise, I think the area that they're trying to exploit, they're both trying to exploit the same part of the court. Six all. Do or die for one of these two. Ooh, we have trickle boast. That's straight enough. Ali stepping up high on the tee. You can see now this is the, the charge. You know, he's hunting now. He's hunting. He's going to try to throw in every trick that he can just to get that lead. Paul Cole not going to make it easy. As I said, the counter attack from Paul being so good. Um, if you miss your lines with Paul, I think he's such a difficult situation. Oh, okay. So obviously, <sighs> falling on the court, ball travel over that area. They have to take a let for safety precautions, otherwise, someone's going to slip. They're playing a let there, six all. Got the volunteers coming in there to wipe things down, but he caught him with that trickle post, and then obviously. Um, you know, both both players were asking for a let there, uh, unless unless Ali was um, what do you call it? You know, 
asking if the pickup was good, but I think he's basically saying caution, please, because that area is super wet. He was about to step over it. He knew that someone's going to step over that. Um, you know, no one wants to slip up, especially end their season, um, especially for something that can be avoided. So yeah, we had six all. That was a let. Um, I think, as I said, one of these two definitely trying to establish a good position uh, situation. I mean. Um, and then take it to the next, take, take, take the next few points. Um, this is going to be a search from both of them. I think, you know, we would, I won't say it will make or break, obviously anything can happen in the um, later part of the game, but I think this is, this is a crucial period of time. And oh my, so is that dog? Ali had him with the cross port flick. Um, as you said, as you can see, he's taking obviously a lot more risk because that's where there's actually absolutely nothing but Ali seems to be pushing. Really, really pushing. So Paul Cole being 7-6 up. Um, Ali needs to fight back to equalize on this one just so there's a little bit less pressure because if Paul Cole gets two points up, I think it could be tickets. Um, I don't think he'll let that go. I and mean, Obviously, I'm not saying Ali can't fight. He's world number one. Um, but, you know, it will require a lot more from Ali to fight back. So he doesn't want to get, let that situation occur where he has to fight back. Um, from 8 6 style. Uh, Paul Cole obviously trying that cross court flick of his. He's obviously really pushing to get that two point cushion. It's only one point cushion, so anything can happen. Any unforced area. There we go. Boom. Strip ball, 7 all. So Ali pushing back. A huge fight, 7 all. Wow. We might see another 12 10 situation like with the last, last, with the last tournament. I'm getting nervous here as well. Ali, clear, critical shot there. So there's that front left area. Um, you know, Paul Cole's just being, or just hit a, I won't say very loose shot, but you know, it was just a little bit loose there. And Ali, ah, BMT, these are the big moments. That's where, you know, he needs to be critical and clinical. Um, Paul's going to fight back, try fight back. He doesn't want that two point cushion. Um, you know, oh, and then unforced error. Now it's eight up. So now you know that your next four points are going to be if it actually gets to that situation. But, uh, you know, there's going to be a big fight. Um, I think now we're going to see the attritional side of things, um, unless there's a glaringly uh, open opportunity to take the ball and short and win it. That's when these guys will take up, take it up. But yeah, let's see. That's a loose shot from Ali, able to counter with a drop. Oh, lovely pickup. As I said, just take one mistake, and you know, this is the you know, these are the big boys, you know, the top of the top. You take one or just one step, you might have one step, or make one mistake and it's over. So you can see Ali now probably going to try be attritional as possible, as attritional as possible. Um, oh, there we go. Unforced error. Just wait for one of either unforced error from Paul Cole or wait for a mistake. And this is what he needs. Nine eight. If he takes the next one, if he gets to 11 8, I don't see it, I don't see Paul coming back. I feel like Paul would just be too desperate. And I think that's where the uh, mentality experience um, of every of, of, of Ali will shine. So Ali 9 8 up and he goes the next unforced area. So, okay, so I have no idea what's gonna happen now. Um, it's anybody's game. Nine all fifth game. Paul called to serve. If he had got that one, I think you know it would have set up such a uh i'll say easy victory per se but i think um you know the next shot would have been um i'll say easier you can see that they are really fighting for that front right front left uh area counter attacks and attacks just being thrown in there obviously setting up now basically waiting for opportunity for someone to open up the court that either one of them can attack that area so it seems as i say front left front right what is that oh did he say no net Yeah, player review, Ali. I have no idea how they'll say that, but let's see what the sky cam has to say. It's a lip or loose, yeah. Oof, but sky cam, where is the where he's got there? He wants to take it in front of him. It is tight and cold, but it's a loose shot from ball. So, oh, that is oh, no streams frozen. Um, that is where the 
referees have to make their decision. You know, they've obviously qualified. They are qualified in making these decisions. They know better. Um, I can't see any picture. It would seem like poor call serving. So is a let ball. Nine all. Come back. Squash TV. This is not the time that you freeze when it's nine all in the fifth game. Um, come on. Come on. Come on. I really need to see how this ends. I might be a bit behind. Seems like everyone's dropped off the stream. I'm sort of starting to see figures and shapes, but yeah, no, come on. I need to see what's going on there. Or was it just my internet connection? So, mine all fit set. Um, it seems like I've got a different stream. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Refresh the page just to see it now, so it's not only me, possibly not only me. Oof, oof, oof. Nerve wracking. Yeah. In his way. But is the shot too good? That's a question. Is the shot too good? Nah, it's not too good. I think he definitely could have hit a post on that one. Uh, but yeah, what do I know? They know, you know, they've got obviously all the angles to view everything. Uh, no net. Woo! Shot was just deemed. It was deemed to be too good. Poor call is ten nine up in the fifth championship ball. Wow. Let's see if there's a response from Ali. Was poor call going to finish this? You, know, he's, you can see he's trying to calm himself down. Uh, he's looking for one opportunity. He's been here before as well. Ali's been here before. Let's it go pass. Is there a winner? He's going to try and make Ali work. And I think this is where Paul Cole, obviously him being a fitness freak, really comes into to, um, his advantage because now he's going to be hunting everything, obviously. It might make him a little bit too desperate. Um, and he might be one just prone for error. But yeah, Ali depends if he's going to be calm or not. And let this opportunity slip. Um, it's anybody's game still, even though he's 10-9 up. I think it's anybody's game, but now Ali obviously knows that any sort of slip up right now is detrimental. Um, so you just see that extra little extra second and pause before a shot. He doesn't want to do anything too drastic. Um, let's see. Oof. This is nerve wracking. He's going to go for broke. Oof, that's a tight one. I can see the nerves that are. Um, you know, there's a lot of tension in here. Although he's throwing the ball up and stuff like that, I don't think he's going to go for anything risky. Uh, neither of them are going to go for anything risky. So I don't understand. I think if he's going to lift it up, <laughs> he's waiting for a hopeful Nick. Ali went for the drop shot there. I think he thought it was the winner. Oh. That's a stroke. Oh, no. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Unless they said no let's in that situation where I felt that yeah, I understand why Ali did it because you know he would have held and him playing he would have accepted interference and poor Cole would have been nowhere. But yeah. Unforced error, front, right, front, left. Like that's where all the opportunity was. Uh, but well done to Paul Cole. Um, a lot more elements to his game that he's added, which definitely make him, you know, one to watch. But here, that's where he threw it in there. I really feel that that would have been a stroke. He was all, he cleared, I guess. Um, but Ali knew what he was doing. He, he was hoping that he was going to basically um, catch him off guard. You know, he'd create all the space all he needed. The opportunity was there. All he had to do was basically the ball up, but just a bit too cute. Just a bit too cute. And yeah, we got Paul Cole. Who wins? Um, yeah, and that's that for the stream, guys. Uh, yo, what an epic game. Uh, epic encounter. I didn't see it happening. I didn't see it going that way, obviously. Uh, Paul had, um, what do you call it? Had a great run, um, you know, destroying Diego Elias. Uh, I won't say destroying Mo. Mo obviously had a good tactic, I guess, in the fourth yesterday or third yesterday, but yeah, obviously. 
Paul being a bit too strong, obviously a bit too lean. I know it says Paul Cole's currently 83 kg, but I know about 84. And I, there's no, and we, we always say we similarize. I think he's three centimeters taller than me. There's no way he's sitting at 83. I think he's definitely locked in probably 77 or so. So it'll be interesting to see what he weighs because I think, you know, he is just a phenomenal beast at the moment. Um, I think he's got his diet right. He's, uh, He's, 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 he's a work ethic, he's got, you know, the extra elements he's added to his game, but the conditioning seems to be on point at the moment compared to some of the other players in the tour. Uh, no doubt, obviously, that definitely wrecked him. But, uh, no, it's a good it's a good victory for him. I think if Ali didn't make the unforced errors that he, you know, he made, I guess he can set for both, both of them. You know, they both made unforced errors, but I think if Ali was a little bit sharper, front, right, front, left, um, you know, he would have um, taken this one, but yeah, there's going to be the New Zealand tournament, New Zealand, which is coming up. I think that's upcoming and that's going to be the next one to watch. Knowing Ali, he'll ever be able to, both of these guys are going to go back and watch this and, you know, see where it is that they can make the changes. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it was that no lets uh, at 9 all, and then the unforced error, error obviously, at 10-9 that... Uh, Okay, Paul Cole, the, the advantage here. Yeah. It was such a tough game. Such a good game to watch that as well. Uh, tactically, there was such a tough game. Such a good game to watch that as well. Uh, tactically, the response, you know. Mentally, you'd love to understand what's going through these guys' heads. You understand why they are the top of the top. But yeah, that's it. It is 3-2 to Paul Cole, who wins the Hong Kong Open. Um, yeah, Ali won 12-10. Paul Cole won 11-3. Uh, Paul Cole took the third, and then Ali returned with eleven eight one in the fourth, and then yeah, at the end eleven nine two, Paul Cole. Jeez, what a game! Um, yeah, guys, that's about it. Um, I'll try and do another one of these, especially when the um, what do you call it? The other tournaments coincide with, obviously over the weekend and on the good time zone that I can watch in the afternoon. Um, I have got a question from Samarth Argawal. Do you think the accuracy decrease in the first game? First game, the pressure from Paul Cole the first couple of games was amazing. A hundred percent. I don't want to say that the accuracy. Well, it depends who who is you talking about. I think definitely with the nerves that were, um, I guess, uh, part of the situation. Definitely the accuracy decreased. Um, but I do believe that um, the opportunities were in the front right and front left, and that's exactly where you know the points were lost and won. Um, and um, I think, yeah, when you are obviously a little bit nervous, I think that that's where um, you're gonna, you know, decrease in accuracy. I think that's where people will overhit the ball, um, it will clip the side wall, obviously, trying to be a little bit um, greedy. In terms of the points, but definitely, I think the pressure from Paul Cole, and I think he's new side to the game, having or adding a few more shots, and obviously he's all part of the game, which means that he's able to, um, you know, retrieve everything and just keep the pressure and the physicality. Obviously, you're working well. I think that's what's miss. Well, that was miss. That's what was missing in his game, and it's definitely very different to let's say your Mohammed Al Shabagis and your Mustafa Sals and of how it is that they um you know are able to finish points off but um, he's doing it in his own way a very different way and i think coupled with his excellent retrieving ability and his accuracy that he had built a solid foundation on um you know i think that's going to be a huge part of his game it's going to be interesting if someone like a joel macon also you know adds a few more layers to his game i think he I'm not saying he, not to say that he's more conditioned than Cole. Um, you know that is going to be a debate. You can last longer, but I think he can have the similar can have a similar um, sort of outcome as Paul Cole. I think the game is definitely shifting more towards the endurance component of squad, or let's say endurance aspect of the game. I think people that are able to endure, you can see a lot more players becoming a lot leaner. You know, Mo's a lot leaner. I still see Paul Cole. I do not think he's 83 kgs. That's what. The, PSA website says I think he's obviously a lot leaner. Ali being a lot leaner, um, or is lean, I guess. Diego Ellis also being a lot leaner. Um, so you're starting to realize that you know rallies are getting are becoming a lot longer, games are becoming a lot longer. Everyone can fetch everyone's ability. 
And I think those who are able to lean down and basically become thoroughbred athletes or, you know, um, endurance type athletes while maintaining all that speed are going to be the guys that are actually going to win. Um, I think there was a period of time when Mustafa was also, also not lean. I think that was probably his best shape and form as a squash player, but obviously with that break of his and, um, you know, it seems like he's been hitting the chip, he's obviously a lot bigger. Um, I think that he 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 can come back. Obviously, he's working on his movements, so he needs to develop new patterns. But I think him coming back a lot leaner will definitely uh, work in his favor. Do I think Mustafa Asal's game is weaker now that refereeing is stricter? No, I don't think it's because of the refereeing. I think uh, the parts of his game that made him so strong are also the parts of his game that put him into trouble or got him into trouble in terms of movement. Um, just being able to counter the deep lunges, the deep um, you know um, positions that he can get himself in and still generate pace. Um, at the same time, because he can generate pace from those deeper positions because he's so powerful, he'll probably, uh, let's say, slow down and moving out of those positions. That's where he pulls a lot of strokes, I would believe. So he's changing his movement patterns. That's helping him a lot, obviously. But it has taken away from his game. So I think he's going to probably... I'm not saying he's going to step away, but he's also probably going to go through a transition period where he has to learn new patterns of play with his new movement. And um, I don't want to say, you know, it's it's he won because of he's the bad parts of the game. But yeah, I think the two couples, what made him so strong was the way he moved, but also that's what made him weak in terms of the way, you know, he sat on the board a lot longer, which would cause strokes to go against him. So him learning the new movement patterns, um, under James Bullshop, he will probably start developing new shot patterns, new, um, let's say, um, shot uh, playing abilities. And by doing so, I think, you know, it's going to take some time. Um, I do see a lot of players, I feel, still feel they milk the situation. He's trying his best. He's not definitely improved. I think it's a lot more enjoyable to watch Mustafa. Um, but yeah, I think he has improved. Um, yeah, finding me, he is clearing the ball better after hitting the shot. No, definitely is. But that's why I said him sitting on the ball a lot longer definitely allowed him to play a lot more. Uh, I guess add a little bit more power. And I think him not having the opportunity to do that now because he has to clear obviously a lot faster. He's not playing the shot the same way as he used to. Uh, I think where he's going to be still very dominant is obviously in the midcourt area where he can really swat across it because he's obviously got a strong base. But I think the way he plays, he needs a very strong base. In order to execute his shots um and him moving out of the way a lot quicker means that he won't have that strong base um so he as i said he has to either find new ways of hitting i wouldn't say he needs a new technique he needs to find new ways of hitting new patterns of play with the type of movement that he has to accompany it um but yeah he is he has been enjoyable to watch but i think he is a few months away from you know putting a poor call uh a diego a uh ali farag in trouble um, and he has got the game and the ability to do it because, as you could see here, the places and opportunities that seem to exist, the only places or opportunities that seem to exist is obviously um, you know, dominating the tee and using the front right and front left areas to sort of exploit um, any weak shots and basically burying. That's where all the kill shots seem to, 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 to be taking place these days. Um, and he has that shot-making ability to put them in those areas, but now he needs to obviously... A couple that with movement. So I feel like one, he's going to definitely um, need to change how you know he plays his shots with a new movement. And two, I think him leaning down because he's going to have to play a lot more traditional. He has to take play longer rallies before he can actually play those shots. And as you can see, that's the difference between a four call and Ali. They're willing to you know wait for the opportunity, but also be strong enough to actually step up and take it. Love the watch long. Please continue to do so for semi-finals onwards. Platinum events. Love the content. Thanks so much, Samarth. Um, I'll definitely try. Definitely try if it obviously um, lines up. I think the next few will definitely line up with my schedule to to um, you know watch them over the weekends um, at these hours. You know, I work during the day, so being able to do so, um, I guess, during the week will be very difficult per se. But um, especially with the tournaments that line up, I think I should have probably done this earlier. I should have done it for the ladies' final, but I just hopped on and I thought, well, while I'm watching it, might as well comment. So I definitely uh, put this in the content plan and try chat. It's the first time I've done it. So hopefully you didn't enjoy for those who streamed or uh, joined in today. And to those who will watch it later, I hope you guys enjoy it. But I'll definitely plan on doing it a lot more in the future. But yeah, 
ladies and gentlemen, your champion is Paul Cole for the Milwaukee, it's called Milwaukee, Hong Kong squash open. Uh, without further ado, take care. Uh, luckily, play platinum events, semis, finals on weekends. Okay, so that's something new for me. So yeah, platinum events, I should probably drop them out to my calendar and then I can actually do that over the weekend. So yeah, thanks for the update. It definitely helps in terms of planning content so all the platinum events i'll try definitely come and watch along from semi-finals finals. so i should have actually done yesterday because my wife and i actually watched um, um the semis as well um but i thought today well if an opportunity is there let me try it out um, but i definitely want to try to do a lot more of this type of stuff um it is something that you have to get used to you know speaking to yourself on camera and obviously interacting with chat all the chat's not that bad but you know until the questions come in, um, speaking to yourself on camera is something that you have to get used to. But I will definitely uh, do a lot more of these for platinum events and any tournaments that line up over the weekends. Uh, but yeah, as I said, thanks everyone for tuning in. Take care, stay blessed, and see you, at, see you on the next one. Okay, cheers.